Good morning, and uh, I'm happy to be participating in the Digital Senate uh, 2021 and talk about how India is architecting the vaccination rollout uh, for, for Corona uh, vaccine. Uh, let me first share with you as to uh, how this program has gone so far and why uh, this, this kind of techni technology architecture was necessary. So one is that the prime minister, as you know, uh, our prime minister launched this program on 16th of January, uh, 2021. And the first uh, people who, first recipients of the vaccine were the health workers, both in the private sector as also in the public sector. Thereafter, we targeted uh, somewhere in the, from the first week of February 2021, the frontline workers also. So various kinds of workers who were actually, uh, you know, doing the service or, or who were active during the Corona period uh, without, you know, caring for their own life, they actually were serving the society at large. And therefore, we owe them this duty that we kind of protect them. Uh, at the first instance. So these two groups were actually the ones who were receiving the vaccine for the first time, you know, in the first phase. Thereafter, from 1st of March, uh, we have uh, opened up uh, the, the vaccine program for all people who are above 60 years of age and also uh, those who are between 45 to 60, but have certain comorbidities. Uh, the comorbidities have been decided or defined by a team of experts uh, under the leadership of, of the director of AIMS, Dr. Guleria. So uh, this is when we have started. We have also made certain interesting changes. One of the changes is that uh, till 1st of March, we were doing the vaccination program using only the government facilities and hospitals and the state government. Now we have opened up for private sector hospitals too. Those private sector hospitals who are either enrolled with, with Ayushman Bharat or the central government health facilities, or even in those states who are not running Ayushman Bharat, they are the ones who are, you know, sort of participating in the state's insurance schemes. They are also a part of the, uh, the delivery system. And on an average, before 1st of March, we were doing about 3 lakhs, 4 lakhs vaccinations per day. Now we have scaled up with the help of the private sector hospitals and also increased the capacity of our government system. So now we are actually, at some days, we have touched as much as 2 billion, 20 lakh. Uh, one might, you know, sort of say why this is uh, so, uh, so such a high number and why this is required. Uh, now, the, considering the population of our country, uh, imagine that this program is going to be, you know, sort of for the benefit of one sixth of humanity. We are 1.3 billion. And if we want to break the chain of uh, infection, then we have to uh, ensure that we are able to inoculate, vaccinate uh, our people as early as possible. Uh, also, the fact that India is the vaccine capital of the world, and actually we have a, a huge capacity of vaccine manufacturing. We are also exporting and helping other countries uh, in the meanwhile. So I think that's, that's where the scale becomes very important, the speed becomes very important. Now, the next question arises as to why uh, the technology is necessary to ensure this. Uh, there are uh, many reasons for that. One is that it is only through technology that we can, you know, kind of make it possible for such a large number of people to get vaccinated. Otherwise, uh, if we don't use, let's say, information systems to inform them to essentially they can register, they can actually get reservations and appointments, uh, the whole thing will become very chaotic. You know, if you know, on a center, maybe one someday there's nobody who comes for vaccines, some other day, you will have thousands of people thronging to that center. And therefore, it is important to organize things in an orderly manner. And that is one of the reasons why technology is necessary. 
The second reason which is important is that the vaccine is not in a single dose. The vaccine is in a double dose, uh, typically. Maybe you will have in future some single dose vaccines also, or maybe uh, as many as three doses, we don't know. But as of now, both the vaccines which we have been uh, using in India are two dose vaccines. And there has to be a gap of about 28 days or so uh, between these two vaccines. So well, what is important is uh, that we have to monitor each and every individual as to when was he vaccinated, he or she vaccinated for the first time. And therefore, what is the schedule for next vaccination? Now, that also is not possible without the use of technology. Similarly, we also have to ensure that a person who was given vaccine X in the first dose, he or she has to be given vaccine X only in the second dose. And therefore, we must ensure that he or she is not given a different vaccine because that will not really fulfill the purpose of vaccinations and probably can give rise to complications even. So therefore, again, it is necessary that we monitor each and every individual's vaccination, uh, you know, sort of thing as to when was he vaccinated, when was he vaccinated, where was he vaccinated, and what uh, vaccine was he vaccinated with. Lastly, it's also important to collect the uh, adverse impact of, of vaccination if and as and when they take place. So, so as you know, after vaccination, people are asked to wait for 30 minutes to be there and you know they can they can uh, they wait there and then if there is any adverse impact there are any adverse symptoms those symptoms are taken care of by the hospital concerned but they are also reported back to the system that way we will be able to correct collect data to see as to which vaccine is typically causing what kind of adverse impacts and you know what is the frequency and stuff like that and what are the symptoms of these adverse impacts so I think for that also you need technology. So essentially what is required is that for having a vaccine done in an orderly manner at such a scale and with such a speed where you are doing 2 million vaccinations per, per day, it is important that we have to have complete record of vaccination. Another thing is because there is a huge gap in demand and supply and we have begun with what we call the priority groups. So, for example, now we are having senior citizens and people with comorbidity more than 45 years of age. It is important that we cover only those people. It should not happen that in the name of those people, somebody else takes the vaccine and therefore, you know, deprives the real genuine beneficiaries of their rights. So, therefore, identification of beneficiaries is also necessary. And identification will involve, obviously, identity document. Either it is Aadhaar, which is actually can provide a digital uh, identification without any paper, a paperless identification, uh, or, or other papers which have got your photographs, your uh, you know, uh, uh, date of birth, and your uh, gender. These documents are, for example, the driving license, the election photo ID card, the passport, and such documents. So these documents are also, you know, brought and their copies are taken and then, so that ensures that we know that we are vaccinating the correct and eligible person. So identity, eligibility of the people which, is, which are coming for vaccination is also important attributes of this program. So considering all these factors, this could not have been done uh, without uh, a technology backbone for, for, for this whole program. And that technology backbone obviously has to be scalable uh, to the numbers, you know, 1.3 billion. It has to ensure that after each vaccination, we have also decided that after each vaccination, we shall issue a certificate of vaccination to the person concerned. And after, after first vaccination, it will be a provisional certificate. And after second vaccination, it will be a final certificate. Now, that certificate, you may ask, why is it necessary? We consider it to be necessary, number one, as a proof for the person that he has been vaccinated for the first time. 
and that also helps him in, in looking at the you know he was vaccinated at this point in time this day therefore he has to get vaccinated the next time between this period to this period so that's another part so this vaccination certificate is also very important also the vaccination certificate may be required by the employers after some time saying that i will not you know you please get yourself vaccinated first and get a certificate and then only then i'll allow you to to enter my premises or maybe airlines and maybe some other you know tourist business so we are issuing a vaccination certificate to each individual so these again will require a highly scalable technology backbone this is the reason now the question is obviously this backbone has got to be you know scalable it has to be very very quick uh, and and it has to communicate to the people effectively that you have been vaccinated you have been scheduled you have got registration you have got appointment so all these communications will go and they go through the sms to the mobile number of the person now another requirement of this was that we are an extremely varied country here yeah, we are an extremely diverse country and that diverse country will require a system which is easily accessible system which is a very simple system it should, it should you know technology should help people um, you know doing their thing getting their things done technology should not make them complicated and that is why we have made the system extremely flexible so for example you can register with your mobile number as many as four members of your family thereafter you can schedule them at different dates at different places there is no problem you don't have to schedule them all together so that's another flexibility third is you can reschedule your appointment suppose you are not able to go or you have some important work on that day and you think that you know you should reschedule it to some other day to some other place uh, and you you suddenly got vacancy which is near your place which was not available in the beginning so you can reschedule your appointment so that's another facility so rescheduling registering modification all things are possible and it is not necessary that you know when you have been vaccinated at place x uh, for the first time it is necessary for you to go to that same place x next next time also no suppose you are in delhi and suppose for some business you are traveling to trivandrum and then at that point in time your second vaccine turn comes you can take the vaccine there itself so we are not tying up that you know you should get the vaccine done only at a place where you stay or which is your address you have the flexibility and freedom to get anywhere vaccinated throughout the territory of this country so that's another flexibility so i think we have made the program extremely flexible and extremely you know sort of user friendly you can do the vaccination appointment through arogya setu or you can do through through the website which is a web portal which is covid.gov.in so in both cases you will have an identical experience so even if you have registered let's say on arogya setu you can check your registration and you can further take your action on covid portal also so it's not necessary that you got yourself appointment through arogya setu that you should have to continue to use arogya setu only you can do it through portal also so as you will see we have uh, ensured that the the whole uh, process of of uh, vaccination thing is absolutely you know flexible scalable speedy and interoperable now the question is uh, having done this uh, what will be the utility of this uh, structure so one will have that we will have a complete record of the of the vaccination done in our country of each individual we also have uh, you know uh, the the kind of uh, uh, adverse effect uh, di directory so to say adverse effect repository what were the adverse effects so i think that these are some of the things which we will have and secondly i think this architecture or this infrastructure digital infrastructure which we created can be used for further immunization programs in this country so i think this is some permanent structure or permanent artifact or permanent uh, you know sort of the backbone which we have created which will be useful for health services delivery program probably it will also be useful for the national digital health mission organized by uh, you know uh, announced by our honorable prime minister on 15th of august last year
So I think that will be certainly one of the advantages uh, of this, this digital backbone. India has done many, uh, you know, large scale data things in the past. We did Aadhaar, we did uh, the unified payment interface, and we are doing many digital projects which are massive in nature. And that, that I think it will be useful. One concern people keep on expressing is whether it is actually privacy and security of the data. So let me deal with that also in the end. One is that first of all, the data which is being collected for vaccination is essentially very minimal data. We are collecting your name, we are collecting your gender, and we are collecting your, your age. None of this data is private, sensitive, extremely sensitive. Secondly, we are not collecting your address also. Nothing, is, nothing else is being collected, just three data points, which actually uh, just determine your eligibility, whether you know 60 years plus it. Suppose, suppose we were not having a program, priority program for 60 years plus, we would have just uh, you know, collected the data uh, of, of your name and gender. There's no need for collecting even the age data. But because we have these priorities, therefore we are collecting. So all these data, three data points which are being collected are essentially necessary data points. Thereafter, we are also ensuring that this data also is completely safe and secure at the back end. Nobody else can download somebody else's certificate. Every time a download takes place, it has to be done through an authentication using OTP. So that's, that's another part. Nobody can see any other person's uh, uh, vaccination record. So essentially we are maintaining privacy, security and safety of the data. That's what we can assure you that the, all the programs which the government of India has launched in the digital space are inherently privacy preserving. They are secure. Data is always kept encrypted at the back end. And we, we think that you know, privacy is extremely important because it's a, it's a fundamental right of our, of our citizens. So, so that's where I would like to assure that this digital backbone is a completely safe, uh, user-friendly backbone. So I, I thought I'll just explain and share with you as to why uh, we had to create such an architecture of, of uh, you know, digital architecture to monitor our program. And I think uh, overall the experience of last 15 days has been extremely good. Uh, the numbers have scaled up. We are very sure that we'll further scale up these numbers uh, in near future so that we are able to cover our population, our target groups, our uh, you know, vulnerable uh, population as early as possible. Thank you very much for inviting me to this conference. Thank you.